What is going on guys? It is your boy TKD once the year back here on President Source with of course Road to Part 2 the weekly Last of Us and Last of Us Part 2 podcast dedicated to all things Last of Us and Last of Us Part 2. That was very repetitious but with me <laughs> is my luxurious co-host Arachnite. How are you doing good sir? I'm doing well. How are you? I'm doing uh, doing good. I'm doing good. Uh, um, I've, uh, I've had to summon a lot of energy this past 24 hours if you will you know yes getting the uh last of us day to play which we will cover later on during this episode uh so that's been fun it's been good um how are you good sir everything's all good in the hood oh yeah yeah yeah. like uh school's done got through push through that last hurdle Ooh, con- congratulations good sir can we get a gg in the comment section for my boy gg hopefully uh, we like, see a lot of ggs on there if uh well aren't comments disabled you're right <laughs> um, put it in the discord, in the discord uh, I'll, I'll, I'll feel the energy it's yeah okay. <laughs> yeah no uh point. in the discord uh i talked about asking for help on topics for her uh, a paper mm-hmm. 97 out of 100 let's go you gotta love it that's um that's what i would call um some king shit if i may it was it was rough. That paper sucked. I'm just I'm just glad it's over. Oh man, hate to see it. But besides the paper, right? What have uh you been playing? Uh don't worry. No more Final Fantasy. That's been done. You hate to see it, bro. It's you hate to see it. It's a tragedy. Um, but I am about to start the classic FF7. Mm, but, really? Ooh, yes. Like I said, okay. I got it on the Switch. Yes. Uh, I'm going. I'm going uh, out with some family for the weekend to a cabin. Don't worry, still social distancing. Just going with the people I live with. Nice. nice. Um, and there's not a whole lot you can do. So I will be playing FF7 while up in the mountains. <laughs> so um, I have it on the Switch. It's nice. It's portable. It still has the fast uh, fast forward option to help the grind a little bit like the ps4 oh intro okay i did not know that all right so the yeah so the version on switch has a fast forward option as well for some yes I, I did a lot of research before um gotcha before um committing to a decision i see i see interesting interesting i feel like i'd probably still go with the ps4 just to get trophies. yeah just for trophies that's literally the yeah. only reason yeah literally the only reason it must like to have it on my you know yeah on my yeah SD. the only reason i the only reason i picked it up on switch is because uh i you know i i have to go to places with my family and all that and sometimes it's nice having something portable since here in air like here in arizona like a short drive it's like oh yeah that's not too far it's 30 minutes yeah 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 yep it's definitely so <laughs> definitely like yeah no 30 minutes is just like oh that's right around the corner <laughs> that's so tr- <laughs> everything everything in phoenix arizona is like 15 or 30 minutes away it's yeah. always that. It's never more, never less. It's always like you know that 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 is very true. Shout yeah. Out. So it's Shout like if somebody you. else is driving, I uh, I'll, I'll just like have the switch on me all the time. Like I have a portable charger, like uh, like one of those like external batteries. Right. 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 So it's like even if I've been playing for a while, like I can just like plug it in. It makes sense. And keep yeah, keep going. You gotta do so, it. You gotta do it. And I kind of want to get some more mileage out of the Switch. Like, other than Mario Kart and Smash and all that, like, I'm not going to go to play Doom Eternal on the Switch. <laughs> Definitely not. Definitely not. Yeah. yeah I, I think I'm wait- – I mean, there were some, you know, murmurs and reports this week, I believe, that came out. I, th- I think it was this week. I'm pretty sure. Or maybe, yes. like, over the weekend uh, of that Metroid Prime trilogy coming to Switch. I well, need that because – Well, yeah. I need every that. other every other full moon there are, there's something about Metroid Prime <laughs> coming to the to the Switch, every like <laughs> like I I want it. Everybody wants it. We all want Metroid Prime Four. Very true. I have been scorned by hope, so yeah. I'm just gonna I'm gonna temper my expectation. I feel you. I feel you. And like the I think the next series of games that I'm gonna play on Switch uh, is probably gonna be Bayonetta. Uh, which I've oh, I've, yes, I've never yes. played those either. Yeah, so those yes. seem and considering you know I recently played my first platinum game, which mm-hmm. is Vanquish. You know had a had a pretty fun time with that game. You know I think it's worth a a gander onto the Bayonetta series on Switch. You know what I'm saying? Um, so yeah, 
Yeah. And plus, con- considering that the third one, I believe that's coming up, is exclusive to Switch, if I re- if I remember correctly. Yes. Yeah. I would want to just play on the same platform, you know, and not like go from PS4, Bayonetta one and two, over the the, the third one on Switch, you know. So that's how I'm mm-hmm. probably gonna take it. Um, but we'll see, we'll see, we'll see. There, there's, yeah, I have it on the Switch. Ooh, really? Yes. Physically or digitally? Uh, digitally. Uh, I was gonna say, I'm like, I was, I was gonna Ooh. see, see yeah, if we no. do the bartering system. You know what I'm saying? But oh well. I'm oh. sorry, man. <laughs> no, no, no. Uh, it's all good. No, like, um, my sister got me into Bayonetta. Like, Bayonetta one and two are some of her favorite games, and I like hack and slash games. So uh, after I got done with Devil May Cry, she was like, "Hey, if you want something that's like something, uh, a similar vein." Uh, and she's like, try Bayonetta. And it's like, okay. Like, and then it, en- it ended up being hype as fuck. Really? Okay. Yeah. Like, I there's some wait. there's some really cool moments in Bayonetta. I can't and Plus, wait. Bayonetta's just cool. She's like nine feet tall. She like kicks everybody's ass. She looks cool. It, yeah, is, she's very cool. Is she the one that's OP in Smash in tournaments? She was in Smash 4. In Smash 4. Percent. Okay, so not in ultimate, but like back in the day, she was pretty. Open. No, yeah, they, they, uh, they nerfed her pretty, pretty head heavily I in uh, ultimate. I see, I see. Yeah, because that's the first time I honestly heard of that character. Or I mean, I don't know if her name's Bayonetta. To be honest with you, I think it is. I, really, yes. I don't know. Um, uh, but that's the first time like I heard of the IP was through Smash and people like you know talking about how like in tournaments like like she's so dominant, da da and all that. So. Yeah. Interesting. Day. No. Yeah. Like, uh, no, yeah. In Smash 4, a lot of the DLC characters were pretty unbound. So they did a good job with that in Ultimate with the fighter packs. Like, they're taking more time into making sure everything's more balanced, which I am appreciative of. Nice. But what I'm not appreciative of is the Sonic Slander. Mmm. That, that's what's... Yo, my friend swore to me. That he thinks the Sonic movie is phenomenal. Have you seen it? Yeah, I saw it opening night. <laughs> oh, oh, <laughs> but because <laughs> we were planning on going, but then like it launched, it not launched like it's a game. It it released in theaters. Um, on Valentine's Day. Oh wait, it was Valentine's Day. Okay, well then, yeah. damn, okay, a while ago. All right, so then we were wanting to watch it towards like March territory, but then that's when, of course. We went into Last of Us in real life territory. You know what I'm saying? Yeah. Uh, so unfortunately, we couldn't, uh, you know, watch it. But he watched it on demand, and he swears that it's a great movie. So I'm trying to watch it here pretty soon. We'll see. We'll see. But I recommend it. I recommend it. Good to hear. Like, good to hear. I'm, I'm of course biased, but like, I am, uh, I am wholeheartedly dedicated to the blue blur. Mm. I, uh, like. I, I love Sonic. I've always loved Sonic. Some of my first games were Sonic when I could first play games. Like, I was like, what? Like, begging my dad for, like, a GameCube yeah, at, like, yeah. th- three or four years old to play Sonic Adventure. Hmm. My path with Sonic is, is somewhat limited. Um, I had the Square iPod Touch, if you can remember yes. that. With yes. the mirror on the back. You know what yes. I'm saying? Yes. So I had that thing, and I had, I believe, the original Sonic. Honestly, I don't know, but it was a Sonic title that I yeah. had on that iPod that I played Pro- religiously, like a lot. Probably Sonic One. Probably Sonic. I would, I would like to assume Sonic One, but honestly, I really couldn't tell you. I don't know, but I think it's pretty sure it was Sonic One. Was I also, Green Hill in it? Oh yeah, 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 yeah. Oh yeah, then it was Sonic One. Green Hill Run. Yeah, yeah. Um, and I also had uh, a Sonic plush toy as a kid growing up that I that was that was the homie you know what I'm saying mm-hmm. the homie so I won't say like I'm a I'm a huge fan but the last ties to Sonic were definitely in the depths of my childhood you know what I'm saying right um but in terms of me I haven't honestly been playing a lot that I I mean I've been playing games just not as much as I would like to you know what I'm saying yeah yeah. Uh, so what we got? We are doing Deadpool on Joy Clicks, which has been. It's um interesting, you know. <laughs> it's a it's an interesting game. It's a definitely from like it. Uh, it feels like a PS3, like you know, yeah, five six out of ten. You know what I'm saying? 
Like, yeah. it's it's just, it is what it is. But, like, there's some funny moments in there. You know, Nolan North, there's a great Deadpool. You know what I'm saying? Yeah. A lot better than I'd expect, honestly. Like, coming off of Ryan Reynolds being Deadpool, you know, like, it's definitely a similar candor. Um, and he does a really good job, you know, so shout out to Nolan North. Uh, so playing that through, you know, pretty end uh, game. But I have been going deep once again into Assassin's Creed Odyssey, one of my favorite games of 2018. I loved it so much. It's such a great game. Honestly, I think if I were to do like a modern day like ranking of like my top five games of all time, I think it makes the top five. I'm gonna keep it honest with you. You know Ooh. what I'm saying? Like it, I, I don't know what it is about that gameplay loop. I just love, love Assassin's Creed Odyssey. So much so that I did buy the DLC. So we're going to start getting through that uh, here in a little bit. Hopefully in the next few days. So can't wait to go back into that world. Um, so other than Assassin's Creed Odyssey, I have been chipping away at Crisis Core Final Fantasy VII. I noticed that. I saw that. Yeah. Yeah. I did, I did a video on it on the channel if you guys uh, are, watching the, uh, are watching the show and are interested in some of my thoughts. And um. That video is more of like a live commentary where I show some of the I show some of the mechanics in Crisis Core, um, and how it definitely is a nice like coming off point, coming off of the remake. You know, as someone mm -hmm. as me who hasn't played the original Five Fantasy, you know what I'm saying? Um, I think like there's a lot of similar mechanics that are in the remake that may go into Crisis Core uh, more streamlined. I feel like you know what I'm saying. Uh, so, so that is on the channel right now if you want to check that out. But overall, Crisis Core still been great. I've been really yearning to, to see the story through because, because there's some, there's some interesting story stuff and you get so much lore in terms of like the world and, and like yeah. Midgar and Shinra and the soldier division and stuff like that. Like, 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 there's a lot of really, really cool stuff in there. You know what I'm saying? Um, also, you know, I guess light spoilers in case you didn't know, you know, your baby girl is in the game as well. You know yes, I. Yeah, but she's with another dude. She so is with another. She is with another man. You know, what I'm saying light spoilers. I I don't want to say the name of the man, but she is with another man. You know, what I'm saying. But shout out to Aerith. You know, what I'm saying. Yeah. Uh, and uh, yeah, that's been great. So, yeah, yeah. Um, don't worry. So that's, he'll he'll get what's covered. <laughs> oh, what's that supposed to mean? <laughs> <laughs> oh no, man. No, mo moving on. <laughs> oh God. Okay. Uh, what else? Uh, I heard that there is something. Oh wait, uh, of course, The Last of Us. Duh. Ooh, okay. Yeah. Last thing I want to mention. Um, God of War Two. We're still chugging on that. Yeah, uh, yeah. The God of War Shame series. It's been going well. It's been going good. You know, it, I mean, I think for the most part, I think what the thesis is going to be about God of War Two once it's over is that it's a much improved and much better version of God of War One. Um, which is never a bad thing. You know, there's. There's some cool lore we're getting, and like we're like seeing more of like how Kratos is melding into the the uh, the I guess like the uh, uh, how do I phrase it like conglomerate of the Greek gods, you know what I'm saying? Yeah. And like how you know as a mortal or like once a mortal, technically, depending on which point you're talking about in the series, you know. Um, he like has a very unique perspective about the gods you know being there and like mm -hmm. what they do to influence humanity like there's a lot of cool stuff there you know and uh i can't wait to see like if you know i look at god war 2018 in a different manner in some shape form or fashion uh given playing all the games you know what i'm saying uh so so that's uh, going well but uh look at this uh what we got 14 minutes not that bad not bad, especially after la uh, last week. Yeah, definitely not last that week, bad. Last week, like 30 minutes of just Final <laughs> Fantasy. At least we're spending <laughs> a little bit. Straight up. But going into it, uh, The Last of Us Part 2. Once again, this is, of course, Road to Part 2, the weekly Last of Us series. Not Last of Us series. Podcast series about Last of Us and Last of Us Part 2. We did get some interesting uh, things here to make of note. First thing is that big media influencers and review sites have been getting the game slowly but surely uh sorry to trickle down uh i believe like o over the weekend and earlier uh, and earlier this week so it seems like what they were able to state on monday uh at some particular embargo time that they can disclose that they are playing the game and they were also given the clearance to reveal the embargo date which lifts 
on June 12th, 2020. So for that show, if I want, I'm going to actually whip out my handy dandy iPhone and look up uh, on the calendar which day the 12th falls. So that's a Friday. So I think we're going to have to shift after next week's recording early. Uh, you know, this is some like inside baseball behind the scenes talk here. But yeah. I think after next week, we may have to shift the recording date to Friday to accommodate these. Or uh, sure may. Yeah. Like, I'll be excited to talk about it. Yeah, yeah. We're probably going to do that because, you know, on the 12th, then we will be able to cover what people are saying about the game uh, from a non-spoiler impressions thing, as well as the week after that, we can get our first impressions on The Last of Us Part Two. You know what I'm saying? Um, uh, having about, like, 12 or more hours with the game, you know? So we're yeah. probably going to do that. Uh, that shouldn't change the schedule of when this goes live on Saturday. So it should be all good right there. But, uh, but yeah, so uh, just wanted to note that right there. Uh, there are, you know, people that have the game and they are currently playing it to review. Very exciting. And are finished, yeah. Yeah, I mean, you're right. And are finished. And there's, there, there have been some interesting stuff that have come out, uh, you know, about them having the game. One of them is spoilers, which we will talk about a little bit later. But... Uh, two things I wanted to bring up was that one, we got to look at that main menu. Have you seen the main menu? Of yes, this game? I have. Oh my God, dude. Okay. Um, I guess, uh, you know, spoiler warning for those that don't want to know anything about part two. We're going to talk lightly about the menu starting now. What is with the boat, bro? What is up, bro? What do you think? Uh, hmm. I have so many questions, dog. I, I have so many questions. I mean, they're like, I know we're probably jumping the gun on this aspect of it, but during the state of play, they did show Ellie, you know, driving the boat and saying that there are cert there are certain parts in Seattle that are over flooded that she yeah. would utilize that boat to get around. Um, so maybe that could be it, but it seemed like that boat didn't have the engine on it. Last time I looked, maybe it does. I don't know. I, I think it does. Okay, it does? All right. Yeah. Yeah. Probably does. Like, uh, I, like, probably some, like, with the, with Seattle and all that, like, mm -hmm. I think I like part ones a little more. Yeah. Yeah. Like, I can see that. I can see that. Um, I like part ones a little more. Um, I, I, I dig environment like i don't know like cloudy environments like fog i really dig those kinds of things mm -hmm. um so i i'm i'm very excited to uh I'm, I'm excited to see the difference in scenery between part one and part two yeah yeah like definitely i mean i feel like you know just to talk a little bit more about the main menu the overall like ambiance and like feeling of the main menu is super super unsettling and like it just mm -hmm. seems like oh my god like it just seems so creepy sometimes uh when i like watch clips of the main menu um but also maybe something that i kept thinking about too that i honestly feel a little bit more like that this is probably the case is that they did make it a emphasis to you know say that in the seattle portion of last of Us part two you will be able to utilize a boat right because of these flood mm -hmm. areas right and even though the main menu, you don't see any any uh, buildings around or anything like that, like we saw in the state of play, is just pretty much an open waterfront with that boat chilling there, right? But maybe the main menu will change depending on the chapter or season or part that you're on in the game, right? So maybe that main menu screen is a screen that people are seeing because they're in Washington. But then I feel like that's not the case because I feel like we would have seen the other ones or maybe they would have been too spoilery or maybe that's in the embargo, you know, like maybe like, like hey, maybe like, the yeah. first one you get is the boat. Yeah, the, uh, that's what I'm saying. And then like maybe like somewhere like in because they get like embargo, like rules, as you know, you know, what I'm saying like, hey, yeah. like, you can't show this, can't show that, can't talk about this, can't talk about that, whatever. Um, So maybe they were told, hey, only show the loading screen, uh, you know, until you get to X point in the game, because then it will change and you're not allowed to show that, you know. So maybe like that's like the Washington part loading screen, maybe, you know. That's the thought that I had, but who knows? Like something for like Doom Eternal, where the background changes depending where you are. Yeah, 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 
Yeah. Like like maybe like we're gonna see different loading screens. Exactly, exactly. So maybe. I don't know. That's just what maybe. I thought. I had a second point, but I forgot what it was. Ooh, wait. I do know what that point is. Um I wanna I'm, I'm gonna bring up some screenshots for me personally to reference. So we have story, options, and extras, right? Under mm -hmm. the main menu. Uh and then it was when sh it was when the video clip clicked into story you were given the option to continue and one of the main missions is called the gate that's pretty you know uh to know there and i think the gate is referring to the gate going into seattle yeah because we have seen a few of those like massive gates and everything so maybe that's what it's referring to but then there's chapters so the, so, so so that's chapter select and then there's encounters which what do you think about that like probably if you wanted to replay an encounter um, do it I, a little better. Yeah, I guess. Yeah, I guess there's not much there. I guess. But damn. I guess that, that, that's that, that's, yeah. a pretty, that's a pretty concise thing to say. But like, I figured like chapters like would be the affiliated like thing of that, or maybe like what I kind of had an idea of is that, like maybe it's like that. Maybe it's some side of some sort of like horde mode, side mode. How they added to Uncharted Four. I forgot what yeah. that one's called, but like maybe it's something like that. That's their day one. You know, so you could like. You because so you could like you know replay certain like uh encounters but with an emphasis on like a horde mode type of aspect to it given the depth of combat that they're going into in this game that was another thought I had but I don't know just just a thought just a thought wanted to pick your brain on that point um mm -hmm. also we got the PS4 thumbnail when it's on the main home menu of the PS4 which just says Lapses Part Two, in black. Some people were kind of let 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 down by that. I saw on Twitter. I personally don't care. I mean, I don't I don't care. I'm gonna be me. looking at it for like a minute max. Yeah, like seconds, because I just want to click it and play it. You know what I'm saying? Yeah. So, yeah. Not really the biggest deal for me, but some people had a deal had a big deal with that. Uh, so yeah, that was that. Good to see the main menu. Good to see people mm -hmm. are playing the game, reviewing the game. But next up here. Friend of the podcast, friend of the channel, Owen, the homie, had a bit of a theory on the Playstation Royce Discord, which, again, if you want to join that Discord, link below in the description if you want to join that community. Um, he has some screenshots that pertain to Joel and, more specifically, Tommy. says here, look at Tommy's left hand in both of these pictures. I'm now wondering if Maria possibly dying is the reason Ellie is going to get revenge or going on revenge he says but that doesn't make that sense but like yeah you know um so i wanted to ask you because i kind of want to play like a little bit of a game here you know what i'm saying it's like i guess it should go like are you allowed to elaborate <laughs> on this <laughs> given uh the nothing i know relates to that okay perfect all right okay so this is a a proposed possibility yes okay all right interesting because I mean, it's that's a uh, that's something that I feel like is not a mistake, you know. Yeah. Definitely, definitely has to be deliberate, you know. But anything else to add on that point? I guess. Um. I I. Hopefully, it's something a little more significant than like, um, what is it like? Oh, like oh, uh, they're just having marriage problems because that's kind of a similar beat in naughty dog games lately mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. like um so i i hope it's something a little bit more than that like but the, like they're gonna have to elaborate pretty heavily on ellie's involvement with tommy and all them to justify like a, like a revenge thing because right. from like from what we know of part one like ellie only really cares about joel yeah so it's it's hard to um, it's hard to see ellie care about maria that much after spending 20 minutes in game with them in part one yeah yeah and then maybe also like you know that's they could like explain that through the amount of time five years that have passed since the original game. Yeah. Like maybe, uh, you know, in a similar like you know tangential way, how Ellie views Joel as a bit of a father figure. You know, maybe 
through that correlation, she now views Tommy as an uncle figure and yeah. Maria as an aunt figure. Aunt figure, not figure. Kev, you right? You good? All right, bet. Figure. Uh, so so maybe maybe that could be why, you know, and that could be what's going on here, perhaps. But I don't know. I don't know. Well, it's at least nice to hear that it's a it's it's it, it could be something given the leaks that you've seen and that they don't correlate with this theory. Right. So good to see. Good to see. But uh let us let us know down below in the in the comments how you guys feel about, you know, this this uh theory of Owens and uh, definitely join the join the Discord if you have a yearning to. Moving on. State of play six happened. Focus on the last of us. We got a nice big pretty much like 20 minute uh presentation of last of part two and new elements from the game you saw it i saw it we reacted i mean i reacted to it uh with my boy christian on uh playstation source on the channel so if you want to check out that live reactions you can do that i had a pretty funny reaction because i don't know what it was man i don't know what it was but i was so distracted by just the overall gameplay and the overall just visuals of the game, right? I didn't even react initially to Ellie jumping in the water and swimming. Yeah. It literally, like, didn't click until Christian mentioned it. And I flipped out. It was great. It was so funny. <laughs> but, uh, yeah. Yeah. And, of course, you know, shout out Vita. Shout out to PS Vita. Yeah, oh, yeah. I was, I was I was waiting to mention that. That was iconic. That was iconic. Yeah, no. And I'm Homegirl, glad. Homegirl got God playing a Vita. And I'm glad that you know they even doubled down on the vita right and yeah didn't, and and didn't have her playing the vita 2000 you know with the yeah. with the micro you know with the micro usb port and the lcd screen you know and the slimmer yeah. form factor they went with the big boy they went with the yeah. fatty per they that thing had the oled screen the proprietary charging port you right. gotta love it you gotta love it. So I, that was a great. Also, shout out Hotline Miami. Yeah, that was being played on the Vita. I played Hotline Miami on the Vita, so I was like, oh man, I knew that. And like during the reaction, I knew I recognized that sound, that 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 song from a game I played. I just couldn't pinpoint what game it was, you know. Right. Yeah, the thing that like kind of gnaws at you until you finally get it. Yeah, it was it was bothering the hell out of me. I was like, yo, like I know this from something I've played on the Vita. Like I know it. I, I know it. And I'm really glad it was Hollow Miami. Because Hollow Miami is great. Fan yeah, no. I, I'm glad it got a little more representation. Like I know Hollow Miami's popular and everybody likes it. Yeah, yeah. And the and the last like I feel like nod we've gotten this uh, at least that I remember. Um, in terms of like a different media that's not like a marketing thing for the Vita, uh, was in the movie Baby Driver. If you remember. Yeah. The little kids playing a Vita. Love that movie. So it was cool to see the Vita in there as well. Uh, so, uh, so yeah, so the Vita list. But overall, I guess talking from like, you know, just a bird's eye view, Orly, Iraq Knight, you know what I'm saying? How do you feel about the state of play? Um, I'm excited to get my hands on the game. <laughs> yeah. Like, I am the the state of play did a great job, like kind of reinvigorating like that excitement that like a few weeks ago I talked about kind of feeling a lot less of, mm -hmm. which was sad. But now, now after kind of after like letting like I mentioned last week, letting the thoughts marinate a little bit, and not really caring anymore about the leaks. Like I don't really care. That's so. Okay interesting so it's like yeah i get it i know some story beats i know that um i know what might happen i don't really care right right so i'm excited to just get my hands on the game play the game experience the story with everybody else on day one i can't wait like yeah i might know what happens but that doesn't mean it's gonna invalidate what i'm gonna feel or what i might feel because after replaying these sections it really just home, like like drives it home that like sure i know everything that happens in part one i'm still i'm still gonna feel a way like whenever i see like henry and sam get got right 
like I'm still gonna feel like in that cutscene that we played last week, uh, like your favorite, like one of your favorite cutscenes. Yes. Yeah. Yeah, like that. Like I still like it. Still hits hard, even though I might know what's going on. Yeah. No. For sure. And like even specifically talking to the section that we are about to talk about in the recap series, like you know, there's there's certain points that are pivotal. Like, like there's a lot of like big talked about points, you know, in this section that we that we just played this week that still hit very hard every yeah. time I play it, you know, like, and I think that's like also like what, you know, Neil Druckmann and uh, Troy Baker have been, you know, really taking the helm on is that like games are games for a reason. Yeah. You know, like, yeah, games have stories, which they could be translated into other forms of media, but no other media, whether it's written or, you know, a movie can really make you i i mean i believe personally feel like a video game can make you feel you know like in the same way that like you know visually seeing something in a movie can never really be the exact same as reading it in a book it can be close you know i'm saying like it can be very close if it's described very well but there's nothing like seeing it for your own visual eyes and like getting that actual visual reception you know what i'm saying so like I feel that same way when you're looking at games versus any other media that like I think you have the potential to feel the most in game. So like I love how they've been saying, look, like bomb, you know, end of the day, no matter what you've heard, no matter what you've seen, no matter what you've read, the last was part two is a game first. And 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 like it's it's meant to be, you know, engulfed and consumed. My phone just fell. Engulfed and consumed. Yeah. Uh, <laughs> uh as a game, you know. Uh, but, but yeah, I mean, it looks, dude, some of the gameplay mechanics in there look so fun. It looks so fluid, bro. I, I like a lot of what I saw at the state of play, for sure. Like, they're, like, like, going off of what you mentioned, it is, it is inherently human to feel more when personally involved, whether that be, you know, in a situation in real life or, like, in a game other than a movie because a movie is your you're watching a story right you're you have no effect on its outcome you have no effect on what goes on because the story is already being told for you Mm -hmm. so you can feel a certain way for movies and when a movie really like shines on its storytelling like you can feel like you can feel a lot yeah but in games i feel like there is another layer of depth that no other form of media can really provide to you right because you are like all almost all of your senses are being stimulated yeah like you get to see what's going on like character descriptions and good writing and good atmosphere can to like like in it's a good example like in part one mm-hmm. like um when you're when you're playing in like the sewers or any area with spores, like you get a level of detail in like what the characters are feeling and how they move and what they're wearing. So you can kind of like, you can understand what's going on, like smell, you get to see everything. You get to hear all the creaks and noises of the area. And a game that really shines on atmosphere always makes headlines and always makes like character or like players feel more involved right like um so that's why that's why i believe like that's why i agree with you that games are like an incredible form of storytelling and that that's why players always can come back to a game because there are some times where you can watch a movie and then that's it yeah like but if a movie really shines out, like you want to watch it again and feel the same way, and games are, games are along a similar vine. Right, right. Yep, I agree. I agree. Um, but like, I I guess you know what I really want to pick your brain on is like during the whole state of play conference, right? Like, right. what was what was the one thing that was like, oof, that's gonna hit. <laughs> you know what I'm saying? Like. If you even like have an example of that, because um, I'm trying to think of one myself. I think I, I think I have one. It's it's like, it's it's a little bit minor, but I think I have one. But I'll hear what you got first. 
All right. Um. Is yours about the dogs? No, no, no. All right. Um. Something I've I've heard, like I've I've read articles about, and I've heard people talk about, is the emphasis on player decision, like passive player decision, not like uh, a Mass Effect kind of deal where you have to make like very blatant or like a telltale kind of decision where it's like X for this and square for that. But how you kill an enemy, what you do, you can avoid encounters. Like you don't have to finish them. You just need to get to a point where you can get away and right. continue forward. Yeah. Um, But it's like like when Ellie like stabbed the girl playing the Vita, like she showed a reaction to that that Joel didn't. Yeah. At least to the extent of my memory. Like whenever he killed someone, like he Ellie, like it became a joke for some people. Like every time like Joel would bash someone's head in with a brick, uh, Ellie would go like, Geez, Joel and Joel was just I was like, Okay. Yeah. Yeah. Which, Honestly, wow, that's a very good point, actually. Like when Ellie like Ellie stabbed her in the throat. Like she caught the knife, stabbed her in the throat, and reacted not like, like oh my god, I just killed somebody. Because let's be fair, she's pretty experienced in killing. Mm -hmm. Like she's like, oh that was stupid. Shouldn't have done that. And then just cleaned the knife and uh, went on. Yeah, yeah. It's it's like almost like you know what I thought about as you were you were describing that, you know, the, the like difference of like seeing Joel kill and Ellie kill and Ellie specifically being 19 years old and killing, you know what I'm saying? Yeah. Um, uh, to like terms of like, you know how there are some animals that are more dangerous the younger they are. Yeah. Because they can't really like control their, uh, I guess like violence, if you will, you know? Yeah. That's how I kind of feel about Ellie and Joel in a way. Like Joel is definitely, you know, he, he, I mean, at least now, of course, we're all playing as Joel in Last of One. So, I mean, like, it's, it's really up to the player's discretion. But, like, I feel like Joel's style of killing, you know, is very deliberate, very confident, and very swift, right? Like, there's no, like, second thought, really. Like, Joel just kills, you know? Yeah. Like, it's what, uh, even it's reflected in his little brother, Tommy, when, uh, you know, he goes, hey, Joel, you still know how to kill whatever? Like, it's, like, a known thing, kind of, that, like, Joel is just a killer. Ruthless, yeah. Yeah, 100%. As opposed to, like, Ellie, which you're right. Like, here, like, we have see, we see a lot of, like, you know, a bit of, like, emotional recoil, if you will, whenever, yeah. like, she lands a kill. You know, it's not, it's not as swift, it's not as easy as it seems it would be for Joel to do, you know? Yeah, Joel would snap that girl's neck and throw her in the in the water behind him. It's like okay, one yeah. down, one to go. Exactly, and like pay no like it's just another you know obstacle in his way, you know. Yeah, like yeah. The way that I like to think about it is Joel is a sniper while Ellie is a shotgun. Mmm, very good. Okay, like I like that. I like that. Joel, like you said, Joel is swift, methodical, almost robotic when it comes to killing. He knows where to hit and how to hit it. Right, like in Pause. part one. Oh, pause. <laughs> okay. I'm sorry. I'm sorry. I'm sorry. You know what? Like, I'm sorry. You know what? Damn, <laughs> it, you really, you really had to do me like that. Oh man. <laughs> but um, but something I noticed and just, which could be it, like a technical, like uh, like a, like the technical as in like a like a hardware thing, like due to the time, like Joel when he killed somebody. He went straight for the throat or just headshot or just a gut shot and then was done. But Ellie stabbed someone multiple times before just letting them bleed out. Yeah. Yeah. Like, so it's it, that could be a uh, like a technical thing because the game was released. Uh, part one was 2013. So it's like you can't really waste that much space on, <clears throat> on more animations. But it also could be just like a difference in character. But I might also be think overthinking it. Mm. But like it's um I don't know, like like what we talked about, like Ellie is less experienced than Joel, has a recoil to killing, isn't as swift in ending someone's life as Joel could be. 
so it shows that like i don't know like it shows that she has some still some growing to do but that's that's something i like i'd like to see expanded on and i'm sure they will like what's what like i know i always go back to doom but <laughs> um no please do so, please do some something about the doom games that i i love that i love seeing happen is progression even if it's not mentioned directly okay. because in i think like any of us who have played doom it goes from i have to survive this encounter like oh god like this is overwhelming to they have to survive this encounter <laughs> oh man so it it shows like a progression of like your ability as a player and like just like something to like really expand on it's like will ellie get better as we get better or is it gonna just like stick the same because that's that's for lack of a better phrase it's adventurous like the show is like oh yeah like we're switching out the animations as the story gets along like because the more you play the more ellie has killed so we're gonna make her seem a lot more like swift in how she kills interesting 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 comments i think i think my favorite like little things that i've i've seen in this in this play is like the quality of life uh, oh yeah, stuff. yeah so no. so like you can craft an arrow straight from the cross menu uh and not like going into your actual backpack menu but like going and like switching uh, weapons and stuff like that and like switching yeah, what you're holding. The D-pad. yeah yeah uh, thank you on the d-pad yeah uh from from that menu ui you can craft arrows right there which i love also the ability to craft arrows itself right which i i you can't do in last of us you, yeah you gotta find them yeah find them yeah i like that um i love the you know more like emphasis on melee combat and in terms of like having dodge mechanics and counter attacks and you know timing your dodge to be able to land the perfect counter attack and stuff like that like all that looks fun and looks fluid i just hope it plays well and we will you know have love to determine to see that only like 22 days actually tonight would have been the night yeah no ah oh, i just uh, like catch that. me calling out of work tomorrow <laughs> i i just looked at the date man that's that's a tragedy yeah no uh soon indeed indeed well yeah like we were thinking outbreak day for a little bit when the game got delayed indefinitely like imagine were. that yeah it's a very good point could have been a lot further away for sure could have been a lot further away but uh uh as we talked about earlier actually no i think we brought it up during this episode um there is either a last of us part two stay to play in-depth analysis breakdown video already on the channel or will be shortly on the channel so look out for that uh i'm not sure when i'm going to be able to get that recorded and edited i'm gonna try and do it the night of us recording right here but we'll see uh and i i go through the stay of play with a with a with a comb and i brush through that thing multiple hours of me sitting here scrubbing through that thing and i got a lot of good stuff for you guys so uh check that out uh if you will or keep on the Twitter to keep updates on when that will be uploaded. Or you can, of course, subscribe to the channel and uh, ring that notification bell. So you'll be the first ones to know when that goes live. But moving on here, of course, this is a part of the Last of Us replay series where we are going over each individual section of The Last of Us as we push forward towards The Last of Us Part 2. This week, we are going to cover the University, the University and Lakeside Resort. And so sad, Arachnite. Next week is the finale of the core Last of Us story. Yeah. Damn. I can't believe it. It went by so fast, I felt like. It's, he, he, you, you hate to see it. You hate to see it. You know. You hate to see it. But, but like... Sorry, what? No, no. Like, I was going to say is, like, something we've been talking about on the Discord is the game is, like, the more you play it, the more, like not short well actually the the shorter it feels definitely definitely like because i feel like our first few runs through the game like 
you were just taking everything in. Yeah. Like, exploring everything, reading everything, trying to find every nook and cranny. Shout out to Nook's Cranny. Oh, big ups, uh, Nook's Cranny. <laughs> um, so, like, you were trying to find everything you could and explore as much as you could of this world that really immersed you. And then every other time, it's, I know what's there, I know what I want, and I know what I don't want. Shaka gun boo. Shaka gun boom. Like, going back to Doom. Um, Doom Eternal. <laughs> no, like, uh, you, like, my first playthrough took, like, 20 hours because I was reading every codex entry. I was looking at all the environments. I was looking at, uh, like, everything and anything I could do. Every encounter, everything. Like, I 100% of the game on my first playthrough. Every nook and cranny. Every nook <laughs> and cranny. And now, like, if I want to play it on Ultra Nightmare, it takes, like, four hours. You gotta love it. They're very, very true. Yeah, very true. And, like, also, you know, I think I remember seeing last week that, like, oh, yo, next week, University Linkside Resort is going to be a pretty long stream. It was around, like, two hours and, like, 30 minutes. It was it was yeah, a, no. yeah, it was a, it was a lot shorter of a session than I thought it was, you know? So we're getting better. Yeah, I mean, perhaps, yeah, absolutely, absolutely, absolutely. But next week, we will be doing, you know, of course, Buzz Depot, Firefly Lab, and they have on the IGN guides, Jackson as one of those things, but it's just a long cutscene. It's not really anything playable in there. Yeah. Uh, but it doesn't end there. We do have the actual final week happening after next week, which is coming right, which is covering the Left Behind DLC, something that I've never played before. So I'm pretty excited to get that in uh, and actually play that. Uh, and then the next week we will have Last of Us Part Two. So we're so we're, oof, we're uh. We're, we're, we're working our way. It's getting close. It's getting, it's honestly a bit unbelievable, you know, because like I have to look back at when the first episode of Roads Apart 2 was. I'm pretty sure it was like over a year ago, I think, you know, like, mm -hmm. it, it, like this has been a, a, a long series, you know? Yeah. And, um, it's like a bit emotional, like, you know, looking at like how like much, payoff. exactly, like how much ground is covered and like how much, you know, I've talked about this game and like you have as well, of course, you know, being, yeah. you know, guest number two on the show, you know what I'm saying? And just like how far road to part two has come. So it's, 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 it's going to, yeah, it's, uh, it's happening. It's happening. But this week, university, road to part three, Lace, oh, <laughs> road to part three coming soon, guys. Road to part three. Also, I mean, I do have another, uh, hmm, you know what? That's a, that's a, that's an offline discussion. But Ooh. here we go. <laughs> the University and Lakeside Resort. We open up right where last week left off, where we get greeted to the beautiful scenery of, of course, the university. A real-life university, I believe. Or at least inspired by a university in real life. Probably not named directly what it is. Um, uh, and it was really cool also, like, going and playing this. Because I, I played Last of Us... Uh, two years ago, almost to the day, you know, because I played it like two summers ago, right? So I was in college while I played this section, but it is cool to like, you know, somewhat look back six months after being removed from college, you know? Removed? I mean, like, oh, I guess, it's not, yeah, I guess it wasn't removed. <laughs> six months graduated, if I may, like, <laughs> uh, from the university, uh, you know, and like, Hearing Joel, like, talk about, like, oh, yeah, like, you know, Ellie, like, you know, because Ellie asks him, like, oh, so, like, kids would come here to, like, just learn and study and sleep here and eat all day? Like, like, like that's what it was? And they would go and all that, whatever. And then he's like, yeah, like, you know, you, you would come here to, you know, he says, like, uh, party, go to classes. And then he says, like, find yourself, too. And like, I was like, huh, I don't know. I, I, thought that, I, I just thought that was a neat thing to have him say, you know, in a way. It's very human. Yeah. Like, very grounded for someone of Joel, like, Joel's character, which I appreciate. Yeah. Yeah. Definitely. Definitely. Uh, but we go with, we have our horse, Callus. Shout out to Callus. You know, we're going to talk a little bit more about him later on in the episode. Uh, a, a bit unfortunate, but it's all good. You know, we'll get there when we get there. <laughs> uh, but we... You know, press on, and I actually found something that I hadn't found in any playthrough that I've had. So, 
do you remember the first like encounter of an infected that you get when you go into the university? They're on that like second floor, you know, and you tell Ellie to wait behind the gate. Yeah. You remember that? So yeah, yeah. I always found the flamethrower in that building whenever I played the game. But I actually found the flamethrower this time at the very entrance of the university near the near the crafting bench near near the entrance. I don't know if you've experienced that as well, but I always figured that the that the flamethrower would spawn over by that building with the first encounter with the infected. I didn't know that yeah. it could spawn so close to the entrance, you know? Super weird. Yeah. I never found it there. Yeah, I mean, I did last night. It's it's up on stream. I was very thrown off. Like, not in the moment, but, like, subconsciously, I was like, yo, like, I know the flamethrower doesn't spawn there. Or at least I don't remember ever spawning there, you know? Or maybe I just never looked. I don't know. But, yeah, I got the spawn right there, and I had it pretty early. So, it's pretty cool. Pretty just yeah, no. interesting, yeah. Yeah, I, I've never found it there. I wish I had, but no, never, never for me. Yeah, yeah, I think that's been the biggest like. Wait, whoa! Like, I did not know that about this game. You know, since uh, the first time I played it. So, yeah, that was that was a little something to write home about. Uh, pretty neat there. But we're but we're, but we're but we're going through. We're 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 trying to find the Firefly Lab. We're tracking down the building that looks like a bunch of mirrors, as Ellie says so famously. You know. Uh, so we go in and pretty much like this section in terms of like gameplay, we're doing a lot of work where we have to, uh, turn on, turn on a generator to open up the gates that are blocking our path. You know, it's pretty just, you know, run of the mill stuff. Nothing really cool. Nothing really, you know, yeah, just video to. game stuff. Yeah. Yeah, exactly. Exactly. But like, it is cool to explore the university still, you know what I'm saying? And, um, like there was also like a really cool letter that I found during this level, um, about like some college kids that were going through the pandemic, you know, and um, uh, there was one entry that I found really interesting where like the girl that is writing this entry is talking about how her roommate keeps smoking weed, you know, while uh, all this is going down and the roommate doesn't like the fact that she smoked weed, not because she's smoking weed, but because her headspace is in a less serious mind state that if there yeah. were something to go down she's afraid that her high like, friend would not be able to react you know like she's fucked exactly yeah which i thought was a super interesting thing you know i was like huh that's like a that's a very deep cut i don't know y like yeah no i think we all well at least i know people that like as soon as anything hits the fan anything their first reaction is just to get high and forget about it. Yeah. Yeah. But it's like, it's, it's a very real thing. It's like, what do you do for the people that don't want to like pay attention to the life or death situation? Exactly. I mean, it just felt like a very like real thing, a real conversation that I could see two roommates in college having, you know, yeah. going through the pandemic and stuff like that. I just that, that, that thought that was super neat. Um, that neat little detail that I don't think I, you know, uh, explored in the original playthrough that I've had a few times here and there. Um, but we, you know, we press on. Ellie, you know, continues to get a little bit wary of the prospect of there even being fireflies here uh, since they haven't ran to any humans yet, you know. Yeah. Moving forward. Um, we see monkeys in the courtyard. That was cool. You know what I'm saying? Mm -hmm. you Shout love out to monkeys. Oh, facts. Absolutely. Absolutely. Give him a banana. You know what I'm saying? It's all good. No worries. Mm -hmm. uh, what else we got? So we run to a second gate. Need, need a generator. Uh, and then we get Joel going solo into some dorms. Right? Uh, this is where we, we find a letter about the, uh, the you know, high uh, roommate. And there's a poster on the wall that I thought was pretty cool. Savage Starlight, the movie. Which, again, Savage Starlight, the comic series that Ellie likes in The Last of Us that is rumored to be the next IP from Naughty Dog or something of that ilk. You know, pretty cool there. Uh, and then we get... I, is it? No, wait. Yeah. It's a bloater, right? It's a bloater in the spore territory of the dorm room? Is it? I believe, I, I believe so. It seemed a little bit different. Like, it seemed almost a little bit like a shambler to me, in a way, from The Last of Us Part 2. But I know it's mm -hmm. not. But like it, it, it kind of seemed like it. Um, yeah, no, I get that. Yeah, but 
it, it was cool. And pretty much, I think the only time I'm ever going to use a flamethrower was against that enemy for the most part. Like, oh yeah, the flamethrower takes a takes the bench a lot of the game. Yeah, yeah. Like, I, I don't see myself like I wouldn't want to use the flamethrower against like humans. You know, just because like it's not it's not that you know I want to be precise and at, at a distance. Give me that hunting rifle. You know what I'm saying? Give me that revolver. Give me the El Diablo. You know what I'm saying? Oh yeah, 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 yeah. But uh, but that's pretty much probably the only time I'll use flamethrower. So pretty cool to see that there. Um, eventually Joel makes it back on the other side of the gate to be able to plug in the generator and turn it on. We keep it going. We're still trying to find fireflies. We get to the building finally. Uh, we're going in. We're still not seeing any of the fireflies. We're finding documents. Did you play any of the recordings that are in the building? Yes. Okay. Answer me this, right? Were the volume on those extremely low? Uh, not for me. Okay, I kept having, I don't know if it was a glitch or what, but every recording that I played besides the last recording that you get to, the, like, the, the like final thing where we get to know that, all right, they moved to Salt Lake City. Um, every recording that I found was playing at a super low volume, and I wasn't sure what the problem was. It was very weird. I don't know. Super weird. Like, they were straight up just, like, super faint, you know? But, oh, well. Uh, even though, like, I, I know there's cool stuff in those in those recordings, but oh well. So while oh. we're sorry, what what what? what oh. No, I, I just said oh well as well. Oh okay, gotcha, gotcha. So we end up going to uh, an end point in uh, the little phase where we're alone in the building, uh, where we hear the recording of you know this doctor. I mean this this guy in the recording. Who seemingly like a doctor or a or a firefly, which he is actually Steve Bloom, the voice of Zeb in Star Wars Rebels, as well as Tank Dempsey and Cod Zombies. It was definitely him. I didn't look it up, but it's definitely him. You know, uh, and then we get some run-ins with uh, with some with with some baddies, you know, and they go on to attack me, not me, well me. But Joel and Ellie, you know what I'm saying? We, uh, you know, murking them left and right, doing our thing as we usually do. But then we get to a critical point here that uh, still hurt to this day, you know. So there's a there's an enemy that gets the jump on Joel near mm-hmm. yeah near an outside balcony, right? And uh, they start you know doing a little fist fight, you know, and they inevitably fall down that. While the enemy dies, Joel gets impaled horribly yeah. by what would you call that? Like Re- rebar. Rebar. Yes, thank you. I know there's, there's a word for it. I almost said metal pipe, but I know there's a word for it. Yeah, rebar. Yeah. Oh my god, it looks fucking horrible, bro. It looks so uh, bro. Like there are like there are some injuries in games that's like, oh, if you had to take your pick, which one would you rather have? That is not one I would rather have. At all. Under any circumstances. No. Like, it is, um... Forgive my language, but it is fucked. No, y- <laughs> fucked. Like, I'll I'll say it right with you. Like, God, it's, it's so painful, bro. And the, and I love how, like, Naughty Dog did the effects where, um... Oh, I mean, also, wait, I mean, before I get there, uh, you know, I love when uh, Joel says, like, Told, tells Ellie to move after Ellie says, what do I do, you know? Yeah. And then she's like, what? And then Joel's like, move, and, like, shoves her out of the way, and two enemies come at them from, like, yeah. a door behind them and kills them both. Like, still, like, in his, like, fire flight panic mode of him being impaled by rebar, still try to protect Ellie, you know? Yeah, I'm, uh, the adrenaline is really making him prioritize on what he thinks is important. Yeah, yeah, but I... What's like one of like the the most painful things about this whole thing also to me was like when when Ellie pulls him from the rebar and we get like the like stunning like shining light you know yeah it flashes like because you see like it's supposed to reflect like the flashes and pain that he's feeling God it's yeah. so brutal bro so it's rough brutal. oh my God so brutal and then throughout this whole time as he's walking through with Ellie like he's dripping blood it's it's so 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 violent bro it's so bad bro it's yeah. such an injury like oh man it's so 
it's a lot it's a lot right there it's a lot you know uh but then of course you know we so we go through this essentially it's a long engated you know like trying to get back to the horse uh through this whole school while we're still defeating enemies you know what i'm saying joel is like half alive at this point you know yeah no and they get to callus the horse and uh it seems like all right like maybe maybe they're gonna be cool you know like joel seems to be staying stable on the horse whatever they take off and then eventually joel starts to lose consciousness faints falls to the ground and we see ellie like really scared at this point like yeah no like she's on her own yeah straight up straight up and we pick up with a season change we're we're going into winter it's just ellie in the woods and this is the 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 first time ellie's playable as well in the last of us which do you recall your first time playing last of us and how you felt during this section when like you first got um, control of ellie i was like joel's fine really yeah i was like i figured joel was okay like it's um like i like relatively okay okay being not dead yeah yeah um so it, like I, I figured like it's like okay we gotta do like it's like oh main character's injured plays a side character and then eventually you play like a chapter or however with ellie and then joel will get back on his feet and then you guys would be fine Right, Which right was tr- right but no, like you know like i i didn't expect joel to die because i was like this game is incredible this game is going to sell well this game is going to get a sequel yeah 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 i mean i don't quite recall what i was feeling during this point in terms of like how we're looking at the game like in the future but um i could see i think like as someone that's first playing it back in 2013 like you thinking that man like we're playing for ellie for a pretty long time you know so like is this story gonna end with ellie you know and like is joel really dead you know i know that that's probably like likely not what a lot of people thought but i could certainly kind of see someone feeling that you know or like taking that away from this section you know but i feel you yeah so we have uh Ellie here on their own hunting a deer, you know. Finally get it. Then we get then we get introduced to Nolan North voiced David. This guy. This this freaking guy. Let me I have two words to describe my feelings. <laughs> two words. Please fuck do. David. It's a big fuck David. It's a big fuck David. That's factual. Um he is so creepy you know and like like he he does play it off pretty nice for the first half that we you know are introduced with david you know where like uh you know it's 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 like um so essentially how it's set up is that david and his partner i i forgot his name but um you know he was just like another person in david's squad whatever uh is like hey we see you cut a deer would you like to trade some deer meat because we have a uh, settlement of, you know, women and children and stuff like that over here. And then Ellie says the same line, like, oh, I'm also with a group of, with women and children. You know what I'm saying? Like, to like, I don't know. I just thought that was clever. Not clever, but just like a funny, like wit type of thing that Ellie would say, you know. So then, uh, you know, we have David, you know, trying to barter once again for uh, deer meat, for, for supplies, whatever. And then. I love how this is how it's revealed to the player that like, okay, Joel is likely alive. You know, Ellie like instantly jumps to medicine, you know, mm-hmm. while David's listing off like food, you want ammo, you want, w- 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 you know, clothes, weaponry, what do you want? And like, she just jumps to medicine, you know? Um, so I love that. Like, that's like the first like inkling of, um, uh, what's the name? of like Joel being alive, you know, through like that facet. Um, and then he says, okay, cool. Sounds good. So he sends the, his, his helper to go back to get, what was it? Three bags of penicillin and like needles, I think something like that. Or yeah. Syringes, syringes. Uh, and then he looks like super confused. Like, yo, like, are you serious? You know? Cause I think it, cause we'll, 
it starts to unravel now and make a lot of sense in hindsight that like this dude was wanting to kill Ellie, you know, because Ellie and Joel have been killing all their men the past few weeks and stuff like that, you know. Mm-hmm. So I thought that was a interesting way for uh, that to kind of unravel. Uh, like, I I like seeing like I don't know. Like something I I really appreciate in Naughty Dog games is the uh, is just how everything how everything feels human, right, right. Like um, they are like you can see him in his facial expressions, putting the pieces together. Mm. Yes. Yeah. That that's a very good point too. Yeah. That that's a very good point as well. Yep. Yep. Like I, uh, I like something like something I like, you know, a game like a story based game like this can be like you can make it or break it based on character expression. L.A. Noir took this and made a whole game around it. Mm. <laughs> so like the advancement of technology, because back when L.A. Noir was being developed, the amount of capture that was in The Last of Us and even The Last of Us Part Two bankrupted the developer. Yeah, yeah. So, so seeing that progress in 2013 and now in 2020, it's like you can see them put the pieces together through intricate animation detail. In like it is, the amount of detail that goes in everything a character does in these cutscenes is, it is immaculate. It is is very very interesting to see and like it really really puts you into the perspective of each character you if you like them or not mm. yep very very well said very well said so ellie takes the bait you know and it's like all right yeah. go ahead get the penicillin you know and you can have the whole deer like she 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 doesn't even care about the deer at that point but like she just wants the medicine of course for joel you know so then uh, uh, Ellie being very, of course, not trusting of David here, you know, holding mm-hmm. the gun to him, whatever, uh, makes him drag in the deer into uh, the inside of this, like, building, uh, you know, not not out in the cold and stuff like that. Then they get attacked by a bunch of infected. So we get a cool little, little sequence of that. Very reminiscent of COD zombies. Mm-hmm. Very reminiscent in terms of, like, boarding windows and stuff like that. I just thought that was a nice little cool. I, I, I doubt- played that last night. <laughs> Huh? I played COD Zombies last night. Would you look at that? Would you look at that? Like, I doubt it was like a really direct. No, I doubt it. You know, because like I don't see any ties against Naughty Dog and you know Treyarch unless they're just talking from like a games perspective. Like they're both game devs. Like sure, like just referencing another game. But uh, it is very, very, very oddly reminiscent of COD Zombies. You know what I'm saying? Like it felt like Neuro- it. It felt like Knocked Around Totem. You know what I'm saying? In like a in like a bit of a way. Um, so they do that whole thing. Eventually, David's like, yo, screw this. Let's just break out of here. So they continue on. They go into this warehouse, doing some more killing, trying to escape. You know what I'm saying? Just pretty light, you know, service level stuff. Ellie has to grab a ladder at one point. You know, they get split up at one point. But that happens in the span of, like, 10 minutes. You know, it's a very, very small section. Uh, and then we get to, like, I want to call it, what, the, not the boiler room, but, like, the electrical room where they do like their last standoff against all these infected, you know? Uh, and David sees that there was, there's some bodies and some equipment that were from past men that he sent out on some sort of expedition, you know, uh, it's just, just to get a little like detail there. Uh, so they, so Ellie and, uh, you know, David white knuckled this whole entire engagement. They are stuck in this enclosed room and they kill all the infected, wave after wave as well kind of re- reminiscent of like cause zombies too in a way you know um so they do that they make it out so like at this point ellie's a little bit more trusting of david you know he just helped her survive this whole thing whatever and then we get the cutscene where it all changes you know david and ellie are back in the original room uh and the friend shows up as david is revealing that you know it's it's funny that like i wound up finding you a little girl because I've been hearing that my men have been have been being slaughtered by this crazy old man and this little girl you know 
And he's like, just what are the odds, you know? And then Ellie instantly is like, oh, man, like, he's on to me, you know? So then, you know, uh, this whole thing happens where uh, where David insists that his, his you know, friend or his, like, coworker or whatever, I don't know, his, his you know, undersary gives him, gives Ellie the medicine. Uh, so he does, and then Ellie gets on her way and gets out of there. Right, which I thought was a very intense scene. Like, so to this day, like I was like, man, like someone, so, someone's gonna die here, you know. Like that was just my thought, but uh, but yeah, I don't. It's just these uh, like I don't know. Like this chapter really just does hit different. I truly, feel. truly, truly, I agree. Like it really does hit different. Like on um, just this is where the story takes like a much darker turn in an already dark story, which I really, really do appreciate. Mm-hmm. Like, I, I like seeing these things. Like I like, I like experiencing these uh, kinds of stories. And so like the, that ending has always stuck with me. Yeah. 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 It's just super intense. Like it's like, Oh man, like it's like, Oh yeah. That last fight. Mm. Mm. Yeah, for sure. For sure. I agree. I agree. Yeah. And then, uh, you know, we continue on Ellie's on horseback and this is the first time we see Joel in about like what, like half an hour, I'd say, something like that. You know, a little more, a little yeah, more, a little more, maybe. Uh, but you know, Joel is just chilling. Well, not chilling it, and like a lot of pain to be honest. Uh, <laughs> uh, but he is like, not vibe. No, yeah, no vibes. he is. He's not having good vibes right now. He's like shivering because the cold, like shivering, yeah. like super bad. Ellie gives him some of the penicillin, and uh, you know, he uh, dozes off to sleep. And then in the morning, we get the hunters are looking for Ellie because they tracked her back to where uh, Rip, yeah. where uh, Ellie and Joel are holed up in this like little house, whatever. And then Ellie does a very, very brave thing for being a 14-year-old girl, you know, and is ride the horse through the whole town to lure all them away from Joel. Mm-hmm. And I think that is understated a lot. You know, nobody ever talks about that. That's true. Like, I'm like, damn, like while I was shooting, I'm like, yo, like this is a very serious thing she's doing for Joel. You know, like she wholeheartedly saved Joel's life. Yeah. Wholeheartedly, you know, on multiple occasions, multiple occasions. Absolutely. I mean, like she she she, you know, nurtured this man to health. (laughs) Like, yeah. A 14 year old. She's 14. 14. Yeah. 14. Like, it'd be very like. I can't. I can't say for sure whether or not I would have been like emotionally capable of doing something like that for a father figure, like let alone my own father. Bro, we're both twenty-two year olds, right? If this will happen, that you got Millie rocked off of a building, right? Yeah, and Millie rocked off the building. Like if you yeah. got, you know, Bobby Schmurda's off off the damn balcony, right? Damn. And I and I had to give you penicillin. I don't know where to start. I don't know how to do that. I don't know how to give like. Do I just pour it in their mouth? I know I don't, but I don't know how else to, you know, facilitate an a penicillin injection, you know? Um But Ellie did. Well, yeah, if you want to make your own penicillin, just get some bread mold. Get some what? Bread mold. Bread mold. Is penicillin? That uh yeah, that, that's how uh, they uh initially facilitated penicillin was uh, through their uh, bread mold. Interesting. Well, look at that. The, the science. <laughs> science. The more you know. Road to Part 2 offering the latest in-depth analysis on Last of, on last of Part 2 and uh, penicillin takes, you know, tips. Yeah, like, <laughs> um, I wouldn't know where to start. Like, any injury I've ever gotten, like, that was pretty deep, it's like, oh, I need to disinfect it. Hydrogen peroxide. Yep, pretty Even much Even though it. it'll scar and hurt like a bitch. That's the extent I know. For sure, that's the extent I know. But during this yeah. encounter... You know, we have all these enemies shooting at Ellie as she's uh, galloping with Callus, you know, bobbing and weaving, you know, dodging all the bullets. You know what I'm saying? Unfortunately, one does succumb to Callus. Can I get a big RIP in the chat for Callus? Um, this, uh, this, this trusty, this trusty steed. It, it, it indeed should have been David. Indeed. This uh, trusty steed uh, is no longer living, unfortunately. R.I.P. I'm I'm glad it wasn't like a Walking Dead thing, like that these aren't like zombie zombies, because we all remember what happened to the horse in the oh, first season. Oh man, yeah, mm, that would have been worse. Zombies are fucked. 
P precisely, precisely. Yeah, no, like zombies are. This game, I don't think I've ever gone like on a not like a tangent while I told this story. This game, and the movie Zombie Land gave my sister a like a paralyzing fear of zombies. It makes sense. It makes sense. Like yeah. I, she watched me play when I was younger. Like we were both younger. And she has not played a zombie game since or watched a zombie movie. Anything zombie related has been a no go for her. I would say like if this is your first foyer into the zombie genre, I, I, I could see it being quite terrifying. <laughs> you yeah. know my, my first one was Dead Rising. Ooh, nice one. Nice one. I like at, at six, though. Ah, uh, I see. I guess yeah, my no, that yeah, that fucked me up for a little bit. I guess my first interface from like a serious standpoint with zombies is probably like I am legend. Oh in terms no. of media, but like from no. a yeah, <laughs> from like a game format, I guess it's COD Zombies, I guess, you know? Oh yeah, that opening theme of COD Zombies used to scare me. Oh. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Like, <laughs> like at the menu, the menu music, like the piano, used to scare me <laughs> like to <laughs> death. <laughs> I, I would mute it. I would mute it. Fine. And like, and just like, I would tell my sister to like play something on her like Barbie, like speakers on her Barbie like iPod kind of deal. Zombies ten out of ten. Ten out of ten. Yeah, like ten out of ten. Zombies now is religiously associated with the camp rock soundtrack because of my sister <laughs> you love to see it <laughs> shout out demi lovato one time but <laughs> yeah shout out but here we go you know callus dies ellie's now on <laughs> you know what, what a transit <laughs> camp rock moving on callus fucking dies callus gets fucking bobby schmurted off the damn mountain right so <laughs> We're over here. Hey, hey, hey. Ellie is now on foot. You know, we're uh, over on the Lakeside Resort, a similar resort to what you'll be visiting this weekend, maybe. Hopefully not the same circumstances, but, you know, maybe it looks as no. as nice, maybe. Yeah, um, yeah. Um, Hopefully not. I'll take – we're already <laughs> in a pandemic. I, I don't want – I don't want to get impaled by rebar. I don't get my – I don't want to see my horse get Millie rocked up a mountain. Really I don't want. I don't want to fight cannibals. I just want to play Final <laughs> Fantasy Seven. It sounds it sounds like a plan, you know. Yeah, it sounds like a plan. But we have Ellie over here. It's just like a long game of combat sequence. Not really much to write home about. She just sneaks through. She gets into like the big cabin type of lakeside resort type of thing. You know what I'm saying? Uh, somewhere it's like a country club, I believe, type deal. You know, so she so she gets in there. There's still some more combat. She, you know, obviously best everyone in her way except for David, who grabs her. Uh, and then puts her in a cage. Rip. And she and she wakes up, and uh, David gives her food, but on the table they're hacking off like a body, like a human body, you know. So then Ellie asks the very intelligent question: asks the like, is this deer meat, or is this human meat? Do you believe David when he said there wasn't any human meat in there? David, like. Other than, like, until he figured it out, never really lied to Ellie. That's a good point. Like, I don't think he's like, oh, it's deer meat. Just kidding. It's human meat. Because he never tried to assimilate her. If you gave someone human meat, like, it, uh, like, that kind of feels like assimilation in a way. That's true. Yeah. That, yeah. Like, he's like, yeah. we're going to kill you, but we might as well just give you some, like, actual food. Because yeah, I don't. Yeah, and like I mean, I, I mean, oh, I took like a little bit of a different context because like my like clues before I say this point, you know, is that like number one, um, you know, he was very he kept telling Ellie like yo like I'm trying to save you, you know, he he kept saying that like I I think he said like twice, and uh like he kept bringing the point like no like they want to kill you but I don't want to kill you you know what I'm saying. And then later on, when we get Joel alive, you know, um, one of his men says that, you know, Ellie is now uh, uh, David's little pet, you know. And then the, like, caressing of her hand when Ellie's in the cage and they're talking about, like, you know, hey, like, I want you to trust me. Like, it definitely is alluding to David wants to rape Ellie. You know, at least that's how I took it. Even as like a little kid, like yo, oh my god, like this guy's like creep, like creep, creep, 
you know? Yeah, bad vibes. Yeah, which, like, I think, like, service level, you you could argue that, you know, maybe, like, he meant it as, like, a oh, like, you know, the little pet as in, like, my special dinner, which is even disgusting in its own right, you know what I'm saying? But, like, I really think it was for, like, a sexual thing, you know? I... Uh, I I don't like to think about it. I mean, obviously, I don't want it, my boy. Like, yeah, let no, me yeah, not. No. <laughs> yeah, yeah, yeah. No, it's um, I never got like a like I never got that kind of that kind of vibe from mm. like that intent. But maybe it's because I didn't want to. <laughs> yeah, maybe that. And plus, like, I feel like it's so subtle. Like, I feel like it's like so yeah, no. that like I think no, I thought like didn't want to make it so intentional that like yeah, like he she was trying to rape her like. I don't think like they wanted to even do that, so that's why it's so subtle that like, maybe like it's left up to interpretation, you know? Like yeah. maybe, yeah, like. But I do agree with you. Pet in regards to a human usually has a sexual connotation, unless you're talking about teacher's pet. Per- precisely, like it has a bit of like a of like a of like a power complex built yeah. into that term, you know? Of like, if you call someone your pet, you have dominance over them, you know? You have a. a a certain level of control over that person or at least you would like to assert a certain amount of control over your quote unquote pet you know um but again it could be taken out of the way i feel like like and i think that's really intentional it's like really up to you how you feel you know joel i mean not oh my god not joel excuse me fuck um <laughs> uh david's intentions are with ellie and and I, I guess the last bit we get is like with ellie saying like you know, at the end of this whole section where her and Joel finally finally reunite, you know, him, I mean, uh, 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 Ellie is saying, like, oh, Joel, like, he, like, he tried to do X with me, and but, like, gets cut off by Joel saying, no, it's okay, it's fine, it's all good, I'm here. You know what I'm saying? That, it hurts. something, like, something I noted, like, noticed and, like, and thought was, like, really, like, just stellar on Nolan's voice acting like was did you notice that little like what's the word like like that whimper yeah like uh when ellie was about like just about to hit him with the machete yeah like that fear yeah he's because it's fucking weird man yeah no like i remember being younger and hearing it i was like did i hear that right and so i watched gameplay of it and it's just like that that little layer something like you could have just stayed silent with it and it would have been like it would have still been powerful but that little detail of like genuine fear when ellie like brutalizes him not deservingly of course but brutalizes him yeah yeah like it just adds another layer into like ellie's character and david's character like because like through and through like david is a coward and that really just nailed it in it's like yeah he is a coward for sure absolutely 100 percent, i agree yeah also you know a small comment before we move on no one does an excellent job at hiding his Nolan north voice as david oh yeah absolutely. it's it's exceptional like you barely hear it barely barely hear it does a very very good job uh but then during this exchange where david has ellie in the cage Ellie, you know, while 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 David's like caressing Ellie's hand, you know, on the cage, whatever, uh, he she 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 like breaks or twists his finger, you know. I think she breaks his finger. Yeah, there was a crunch. Yeah, yeah, and then I love Ellie's line here, where like she goes like, Ellie, because uh, David asked for her name, and then Ellie says this famous, you know, quote of like, uh, hold on, where is it? I want to read it. Uh, here it is. Here it is. Wait. Okay. He goes, uh, I mean, not he. Ellie goes, Ellie is my, well, she says Ellie, and then David says what? And then, uh, Ellie says, tell them that Ellie, Ellie is the little girl that broke your fucking finger. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> 10 out of 10. Ellie's a savage. Oh, man. Uh, so then we move on from that. We cut to Joel waking up. From the penicillin, we're back playable as him. You know what I'm saying? We're just trying to find Ellie at this point, and then there's some stragglers from the hunters that Ellie tried to run off uh, and get away from Joel. 
they are still in the surrounding area. So Joel starts killing them, whatever, and yells at them and like asking them, "Hey, where's the girl? Like, where, where's Ellie? You know what I'm saying?" So then uh, Joel takes one of them in a, one of the most intense scenes. Oh yeah, yeah, Show, I love that scene. Showing Joel's true nature, you know, ties this man. Also, fun fact: mo capped and voiced also by Nolan North. This gentleman in the chair that Owen told me last night in the stream. Fun fact. Yeah, I didn't even know that. I didn't know that either. I had no idea. I was I was shocked. Shocked. Um, so uh, you know, Joel stabs the knife through his kneecap. Was like, hey, you are going to use this knife. I'm gonna put it in your mouth and you are going to mark where David is keeping Ellie. You know. And then he kills him. And then uh to as like a double check, he kept one of the other enemies in the back of the room, sitting down, tied down. Uh, to then what he told the first guy to yeah, to, corroborate. Uh, to corroborate exactly and like authenticate his decision goes over to the second guy and goes eh, you know I, I believe the first guy and kills him too yeah fucking like snap sad. yeah like snaps his neck with like a pipe no he hits the first yeah like snaps one of their necks with a pipe fucking savage bro savage like Joel is such a killer you know like we were talking about early on in the podcast, like he's just so fucking brutal. Yeah, no, like I dig that. Oh hell like, yeah, absolutely. Whenever I talk about uh, the Last of Us, like with characters that I like, I always worry that one of the viewers is gonna think like I'm a sociopath or something. That's like, like I dig like brutal characters because in in stories like we we always like. Like, the protagonists are usually good-hearted. Right, right. Like, in a lot of stories, like... Like, Jill Valentine, Peter Parker, like, uh, like another Resident Evil, Chris Redfield, like, Leon, all good characters, like, all good-hearted, good people. And then, like, uh, Nathan Drake in another Naughty Dog game. Like, all, like... With some like selfish flair with Nate, but uh, like if you if you had to like say one or the other, like Nate's a good person. Right. Like Joel, Joel just wants what's his or what he believes is his, yeah. and is willing to do whatever it takes to get it. Yeah, and I dig that. I agree. I agree. I think I think brutal doesn't necessarily have to always connect to a negative reasoning as to why you're brutal. You know, I think that's a that I think that's the way I would phrase it in a way, kind of sorta, you know. Yeah. Just his like level of energy here is like very, very like captivating, you know. Yeah, it's palpable. Definitely, hundred percent. But uh, after he, you know, does his thing, we 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 cut back to Ellie. She's on the butching table, you know. The original dude that was uh, with with um David is helping David hold her down, and they're about to. You know, start start cutting her up to pieces alive. Yeah. Right? And then Ellie goes, I'm infected, which I'm like, oh my God, so smart. Such a smart, yeah. so smart. You know, Ellie, Ellie goes, I'm infected. You don't want to eat. Infected me, obviously. Check my check my forearm, whatever. And does it sees the sees the bite mark. Uh David doesn't necessarily like believe it per se because like he's like, No, like she would have turned by now. Like that doesn't make sense. Uh and then while he's Distracted, you know, Ellie makes her escape, kills the other guy, and uh, continues on uh, running away from David. So we go into the snow. There's a, there's a bunch of combat, pretty much. Ellie has to evade all of his men and everything, and uh, this eventually takes her to this like dining lodge type of restaurant type thing. Uh, and it's a cool standoff between her and David where she has to sneak around and avoid stepping on glass to be detected by audio uh, and stab, you know, the version of David that's not looking in her direction. Uh, so she does that, I think, twice. But then, like, you know, Joel, I mean, not Joel, David does, like, a over-the-head, like, suplex move and knocks her out p for a little bit. And then we I don't think that's a suplex. I don't know what it was. Like, the, like, over-the-head type of... Thing. He David like, grabs like, Ellie by the waist and slams her on her head like, <laughs> from behind. It's not causing. I don't, I don't yeah. know what a suplex is. <laughs> it just looked like a wrestling move. 
So I just said suplex. Whatever. <laughs> Shout out wrestling. Uh, <laughs> but then um, we cut back. To, oh, wait. I mean, also, like, before we just head on, like, I love the scenery of being in, like, the restaurant. Like, Wooden Lodge type of restaurant. You know, where? Yeah. Yeah, yeah, yeah. And then, it, it, oh, then I should mention also, it, it, it catches on fire. And the, the fire is slowly spreading as Ellie is trying to kill David. And David is trying to capture slash kill Ellie as well. Uh, but then we cut over to Joel trying to find Ellie still. Uh, Joel is in the snow. We have some more encounters of like, you know, he's, he's just killing the rest of the goons that Ellie didn't make it to, you know. Um, but then we get into a certain section where he goes into a building, sees Ellie's backpack. There's also a meat ledger note that has the weight of different uh, meat that they have garnered over the course of a few weeks. As well as hanging bodies as well. So mm -hmm. it's yeah. clear that like so now Joel was like very scared, like holy shit, like did Where's they Ellie? did they eat Ellie? You know what I'm saying? Like he's like thinking the utmost worst thing, right? So when he goes outside, sees the sees the burning lodge restaurant on fire, and it's like, okay, Ellie's Ellie's hope hopefully there, whatever. Uh so then, you know, Ellie this is this is pretty much a cutscene at this point. Um, Ellie is crawling towards a knife that is under one of the um, the seats in the restaurant, and like David's just saying some fucked up things, like, "Oh, like uh, you think you know me, huh?" You know what I'm saying? Like different different things like that, and like he's this he he says like you have no idea what I'm capable of, like just like very just horrible things, you know. Uh, and then the cutscene ends with uh, Ellie bashing the shit out of David's head with a machete with a machete like just killing him and then Joel pulls Ellie off and Ellie's so scared like thinks it's like another goon of 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 his you know and like Joel says no no it's me it's me it's me it's me it's me and then like we get a super super sad moment of just like Ellie you know just hysterical yeah you know but um yeah, that, that, that pretty much ends the section, but we will see the repercussions of this part um, in, the, in the last episode next week. Because a little bit that, that, that has to play before you can save and quit, that's still kind of part of this cutscene, is that we have another uh, season change. We go into spring, and Ellie is like muting the entire world and staring at this deer. And she's low key like having like a bit of like a PTSD type of moment here. Yeah. You know, and it's super sad. And and uh, of course, me and you definitely re re recall certain parts of this next part of the Last of Us. This this last part that really shows how affected Ellie is because of uh, everything that she went through in the winter with David. I hope they bring up David in part two. Dude, I know. I need that. Oh wait, no, you're. They have to like. Ellie is too scarred. Oh yeah, that like that's so traumatic. Are you serious? Yeah, they very subtly they very subtly show just how much it affected Ellie. Yeah, it, it like doesn't have to be direct or anything, but just like just acknowledge that like yo like this is a very traumatic thing that Ellie went through for sure for sure. But that pretty much wraps up this section of the game and next week is going to be uh, an interesting one because it is the finale of the main story um i'm putting on my jacket so if you're hearing like a bunch of stuff so <laughs> <laughs> but uh i guess you know before we head out what's your overall thoughts on this section how do you feel about it um fuck david fuck david um felt good fucking him and his people up again hmm Mm. Like, cannibals are pretty low on the tolerant tolerance list. Very. Like in very the apo low. in the apocalyptic world, like usually it's like I can not forgive but understand comprehend the thought process behind like uh like doing like you know killing people. Like, yes. You can't yeah. live in this world to be nice. Right. 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 So like I can understand that like. Even even as a religious man, like uh, it's like yeah, I understand. Sometimes you gotta, sometimes yep. you gotta kill or be killed, especially in a world like this. Precisely, 
per so season. I don't I don't like I understand but it's like the, some of the few things I don't understand well some of the things I don't understand fundamentally is eating another person it's so don't, fucked. don't do that uh, don't do that uh I, it's on site it's on site <laughs> it's on <all> site <laughs> like it's like oh cannibalism in the post-apocalyptic world would be okay it's on site the only thing you're going to be eating are these hands. Mm, talk that talk. Like, f- fuck cannibalism. Yes, <laughs> I don't uh, think that's a hot take. <laughs> uh, I hope it's not a hot take. Yeah, I hope it's no. not because uh, I'm gonna have to co-sign on you on that on that uh, you know alleged hot take that some might have, if you will. Yeah, no, cannibalism, not cool. Uh, don't yeah, do it. Yeah, I'm. I'm gonna have to agree. Um. This part, very, very uh, serious things happen, as we said last week. You know, like like a lot of things go down here. Uh, and we we definitely, like, it's a bit of, like, a reflection of, like, we, like, kind of have, like, real consequences of, like, both Joel and Ellie go through extreme trauma during this part of the game. You know, like... Yeah, Joel on, is physical. Yeah, Joel on a more physical level as, you know, and it being a little bit more traumatic for him, not in comparison to Ellie. I, no, l- l- let me be clear. Not comparing the two. I'm saying that, like, Joel's trauma is heightened because of his old age already. You know what I'm saying? Yeah. Like, him being, what, in his 50s about? You know what I'm saying? So, like... Uh, late, mid to late 40s. Oh, oh sorry. So, yeah, like, mid to late 40s, you know what I'm saying? Like, it's definitely uh, not the most healthy of thing for you to be impaled by, you know, rebarb, if you will. The up... Yeah, yeah, the uh, the upscaled graphics really show just how much this like his Joel's age. Yeah, in the new cutscenes. Yes, or the cut the redone cutscenes mm-hmm. from part one. Precisely. In the state of play. Precisely, and then of course we have the extreme trauma of Ellie, going through however you want to interpret what she went through in terms of David. You know, like that whole thing is just absurd. You know, um, so we will see. How- Shout out to Ellie. Shout out to Ellie big time, you know. Shout out to Ellie. Um and, and we'll we'll see the effects of this whole thing towards the finale next week of The Last of Us. Uh as we uh, venture over towards the bus depot with the Firefight Lab and Jackson. Iraq Knight, where can the people find you? Uh the people can find me on the PlayStation Source Discord. Uh, I along with a lot of other members are very active. We talk about everything and all things Last of Us, along with other games that we're playing, other things that we have questions on, what we're interested on. And if you ever just feel like talking, like just about anything, like we have uh, the homie Ch- uh, Chungi, I believe it's pronounced. Shout out Chungi. The, Shout out to Chungi. The Chungi legacy. Shout out to him. Shout out to him. So, um, so he's on there. He talks about whatever like is on his on mind that we all like give our peace on it we talk about movies games all that good stuff all of us are very active um like we we all have a lot to say about the things we're passionate about and if you have ever have anything that you feel like you can't talk about or you don't have an opportunity to talk about as much as you'd like this is the place to do it truly comics games movies anything and all things that you want to talk about that you feel like you can't or don't have an opportunity to like i said we are more than happy to hear it truly truly like like geek out anything you could ever want like we talk about the nerdiest shit <laughs> mm-hmm. and it's it's a great time for everybody like we all we all have a good time you can find me there under the same name the iraq Knight. you can find me on twitter at orly underscore macias which will be in the description or o-r-l-y underscore m-a-c-i-a-s i'd love to see like I'd love to talk about anything, like movies, games, anything that you have on your mind and want to talk about. I'm there. Like, um, photo mode. Owen Owen always shows us his screenshots. Like I love seeing screenshots. Tag me in them. Send them to me. I love to see them. Uh, I'm active on there all the time. But yeah, those are the places where you can find me. You gotta love it. You gotta love it. Also, all of Oi's links are down below in the description. In the description, as well as our links at PS Source Vids on Twitter, as well as of course that Discord server. You can get a quick link down below in the description in the description. Damn, I can't talk today. In the description to join that community down there, as well as uh, our Twitter. I think I said that already, and our anchor link 
If you would like to listen to the uh, Road to Part 2 on podcast formats, that, of course, being Apple Podcasts, Google Play Podcasts, Spotify. Also, Spotify, if you want to buy out Road to Part 2 exclusivity for $100 million like you did with Rogan, I'm down. I will I will take you up on that offer. Good old Spotify. <laughs> but, um, <laughs> uh, all podcasts exclusive to Spotify. We'll make a deal. We can talk. Yeah. Collab with us. The we are the official we were here first Facts. like Facts. uh if they if they want to collab with us like we'll that talk. yes yes precisely precisely <laughs> and uh yep definitely check us out over there on podcast services as well as like the video if you enjoyed it as well as stay subscribe to place in stores to keep up with lays and grace and play edition as next week we will be wrapping up the core last of us game can't wait for that as well as after that love behind dlc and then last was part two stream series is a go so uh yep thank you for coming out much love thank you for the support thank you for watching and as always greatness greatness see you guys later have a good night guys